Hi, and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna to be unboxing the Atlas Crate, and I'm excited to open this one. I'll tell you why in a minute. But if you are new to my channel, I created this channel as a homeschooling resource to do unboxings like we're doing today, to give you curriculum ideas, organizational ideas, and ways to invite Christ into your homeschool space. So if you're interested in those things, please hit that subscribe button. And let's open this crate. Okay, so the Atlas crate this month is Kenya, and I have actually been there when I was 17, so a long time ago. <laughs> I went to Kenya with uh, the Rotary Club for, with YouthLink. It's a nonprofit organization. We were there helping out a school for the deaf for two weeks, and it was a wonderful experience. I love being there. I love the people, love the culture. It was. I just really, really enjoyed it, and it was just a very eye-opening experience. So, I'd recommend. A homeschooling tip <laughs> send your teenagers on some sort of project some sort of humanitarian project something you know whether it doesn't necessarily have to be in another country it could just even be in your own area just kind of open their eyes to other situations and how other people live i feel like it's just such a good experience for them so back to this <laughs> it says we're going to build working binoculars make a beaded wristband. I don't know why that was so hard for me to say and explore Kenya. So I'm excited to look at all these things. This is bringing back so many memories. So it says Jumbo, <laughs> Jumbo, Jumbo wanna. You can start singing some song. I'm not a singer, but there is a lot of songs I love there and they're just like so upbeat and happy. So I at least know how to say hello in, in, in Kenya. I can do it. <laughs> But when we open this up, it's going to have our little sticker that we can add to our booklet. But then it will also have our cards in here that will help us explore a little bit more. So we have the country here. And then usually it goes through and talks about our friends and kind of gives an idea of what they did when they traveled to, when they traveled to Kenya. And then, uh, oh, this one's stuck. Here we go. Well, here we go. <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> And so we have this one, greetings from, I don't know how to say that, I shouldn't even try. It's a national park, I guess. And then the Maasai, like warriors, is that what we're talking about here? <laughs> and then, I don't, oh, Mancala, we have this game. So maybe we'll play this game. So it has stuff on the back. I think it shows you, like you could use an egg carton as it's showing you to build your own. And then... I don't know how to say this, guys. I'll have to maybe look it up or something. It looks like a pancake. It says, hundreds of years ago, people from other countries arrived to trade along Kenya's Indian coast. And so then it says something about coconut rice pancakes at the end. So that looks yummy. That Do I have coconut flour? I think that's what this calls for. Well, where'd it go? Uh, coconut milk, rice flour. I don't know. I'll have to check. Anyways, we'll have to try that one out. And then we have binocular instructions right here. And the tips are always really fun to read. <laughs> I enjoy learning the new things. And then we have a beaded wristband. So probably for one of my daughters. So my boys will probably do this. Lately, they've just kind of been splitting into the two activities in here. So these look like for our binoculars right here, all the pieces. And oh, maybe there's bracelet. Oh no, this is the bracelet stuff I think right here. And then the beads. So these are a little bit smaller than normal pony beads that we see most of the time. So if you have teeny littles around, you probably don't want them playing with those. These, this is really hard to see in here. <laughs> you just see bubble wrap. I think it's the lenses for the binoculars. That's what's in here. So they're protecting them. And then we have <laughs> these <laughs> for our binoculars as well. And some more pieces for our binoculars. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited to read through all the things as well and to see if there's anything that's familiar to me. Maybe a place I already traveled there. I don't know. And to maybe show my kids pictures. They love pulling out the picture books and I have tons of them <laughs> from when I was in Africa. So maybe we'll pull those out. But we're going to get exploring and I will let you know how it goes.
we finished doing the Atlas crate and there were some things I really liked about it and there's other things that maybe didn't go so well. So let's go through it and just talk about it a little bit. So like I mentioned in the intro, I have been to Kenya, so it was fun to see some things that I was familiar with, some of the Swahili words, and then my kids were able to see all my decor that I have. And so that was fun. I have some big elephants. I guess I should have brought them in here to show you, but I didn't. But I have some like big elephants and a bowl and all these cool things from there. So it was fun just to, to talk about it. They enjoyed finding it on the map. And then we made a few projects. Let me just show you. So we put the things in the book right here, which is getting super chunky, super fat. <laughs> There's not very much room left. But something that was funny for my kids is they saw a Mancala in here and they have played this before we have a game. And this shows you how you can make one using an egg carton. So that could be fun if you don't have an actual board game, you could do this. And then one of the pictures that I have from Africa actually has the, the people playing Mancala. So it was just really funny. My daughter noticed that. I had never noticed that before, but since we were just talking about Mancala being related to Kenya, she noticed it in the photo. So it gives you a whole bunch of ideas back here of how you could make the game. And then I guess since we're here, we'll talk about this recipe. This, most of the recipes I've tried in the Atlas Crate work out pretty darn well. Obviously I haven't ever had like the original for most of them, so I can't say for sure, but this one was, this one kind of was hard guys. <laughs> I was excited about it because it's a pancake batter using yeast, which I have never made a pancake batter using yeast before. And so I was excited to try it, but here it talks about how the dough, you're gonna add the liquid and stuff into it, the coconut milk and the water with the yeast, and then it'll be pourable. Well, it was definitely not pourable. The rice flour just sucked up all the water and it was, <laughs> it was not pourable. So I had to add more coconut milk until it was a little bit more of a spreadable <laughs> consistency. So that was one thing, it just didn't work out very well. And I use brown rice flour. This just says rice flour. I don't know if that would have made a difference, but I already had brown rice flour. So we did that and then you let the dough sit. So this is when you kind of have to plan ahead. So we let the dough sit for about an hour and then I cooked them up, which again was a little bit hard. You spread them out, but then they just don't cook super well. So you go to flip them and they fall apart. I don't feel like the taste was bad. They, they have a more rice-like texture. It remind me of a rice pudding we made. I can't remember what country it was for, maybe Madagascar or something, but a similar texture to that. But, and we added cinnamon, it calls for cardamom. I don't have any cardamom. <laughs> so I just added some cinnamon to add flavor. So here are the ones that we made at least left over. My kids tried them and they did like the flavor for the most part. It's just very different. You know, they call it a pancake, but it is a very dense texture and it's a little bit fried on the outside because you're putting it in a little bit of oil. And so again, the, the flavor isn't bad. It's just, it's just different. So I don't know what you'd use this for if they dip it in like soups or, you know, it, I'm not, it has sugar, quite a bit of sugar in it. So it's fairly sweet not overly sweet, but so I'm not sure what you use it in, but if you know, <laughs> comment it down below because I just love, I'd love to know more about it. But let me show you the crafts that we made. So they made some binoculars right here. So this was a fairly easy, quick craft. Some of the ones we do take longer, this one went pretty fast, but you can also pull it right here and it adjusts the focus. So you look through them, and then you can pull and adjust the focus when you're outside. And then obviously this can hang around your neck. So my boys put this together and then my seven year old did most of this bracelet. And so I thought this was super cute. She, I guess she did about half of it. And then her six year old brother did the rest of it. She's like, oh mom, you can do it. And I was like, why don't you see if your brother wants to do some? So he did. And we haven't finished it off because that requires you to tie it on her wrist. So these strings would go through the holes over here and you tie them in a knot. So I'll insert a photo with it on her wrist. But the colors on there mean different things and it actually talks about them in this booklet. So if you wanted to see, so there's yellow, it's like hospitality and kindness, and then purple's grit and determination. So I thought that was cool. And it goes in and talks all about the Maasai and how they use these bees and how they make necklaces. And I thought it was cool that it says that they, those born in the same decade 
all wear matching beaded necklaces. And then the next decade, they create a new like pattern. So I just thought that was cool. We learned some cool things there. And then also with the binoculars, I forgot to mention they gave us the big five. So we have the cheetah. This is, is this a little like a water buffalo? I can't remember what this one is. So we have an elephant. We'll look at it in a minute. And then a rhinoceros and a lion. So we, that's what we have for those. And it tells us in here, it talks about the big five. So a lion, leopard, rhino, elephant, and buffalo. So yes, it's a buffalo. But you can play a game and hide them or kind of put them in little spots in your house and then look for them using your binoculars. So I just thought that was a fun, like little cute added game that they provided. So there were some things that were great and I think this bracelet was super fun and my daughter's really excited to wear it. And they have different patterns too in here. If you don't want to do the pattern she chose, they have different options right here or you can make up your own pattern. But I thought that was, that was great. The binoculars are fun. The recipe again didn't taste bad, but it was just a little hard to execute. And I'm pretty familiar with cooking. I'm in the kitchen a lot. I bake a ton and it was still a little bit hard for me. So it'd be fun maybe to try out a different recipe for the same pancake or whatever. I don't know how to say the Swahili word, but it would be fun to try just something different and see how that turns out and how we like it. But all in all, I still think that Atlas Crate was great. I enjoyed talking to my kids about some place I've been and just sharing a little bit of my stories with them. That was a lot of fun. So if you enjoy seeing these videos, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time.